Mike Lester, City Council, Ward 2. Andrea Holloway, Executive Director at Council for Drug Free Youth. Sorry. Kate Suggin, Amber Missouri, Chamber Chair. And I want to thank everybody for being here and all that you do for the Chamber. Stephanie, why are you going to CNS Employment Solutions? And then the rest of the work on that. Superintendent, Central Bank, uh, Chamber Ambassador, and Co Chair at Chamber Changes. Thank you all for the IMF Additional Authority and Medicine Center. So David, we can put this up for you to be kind on it. Carrie Spicer with Evan Real Estate Group. Stephanie Gillespie, Convention Business Bureau. Gage Glass, County Hill Foster Care Administration. Jeremy Bonham with Mid Mall of Town Realty. Jackie Coleman Coleman and Associates. And then I'm going to be in town, so now we'll be in. And we'll be in. 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 Molly Bryan, the city of Germany. One of the former mayors of the Denver Center, also CEO of the Missouri Pharmacy Association. Gary Plummer of the Chamber. Renee Brown of the Chamber. Lori Cooks of the Chamber. Aaron DeVere, Image Mark Marketing and Advertising. Uh, Beth Cogger of Liberty Family Medicine, and I'm also a Chamber Ambassador and a recent graduate of the 2024 Leadership Class. Best class ever. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Hurley of Liberty Family Medicine. Straight up, Tony Austin, he's your welcome. Brian Frank, City of Jefferson. Clint Smith, City of Jefferson. Cole Manor, Mark Burke. Ashley Kennedy, Chamber. Hello, everyone. Julie Skinny, attorney at law, owner operator, King New Wolf Bowl. Maybe I'll stand up because it's kind of short, but <laughs> <laughs> now I use it, uh, you said Lincoln Women's Basketball. Brock Lottie, Brian Speed, a uh, little fun fact, I was married on Friday 13th and I'm still married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bushman, Holly Kane, Chiropractic. Cameron Gerber with the News Review. <laughs> okay, is anybody online you want to unmute and let us know you're here? Alex Bobbitt, Convention of Visitors Bureau. Christy DeBure, Image Mark, Marketing and Advertising. Dale Thompson, KMSD, KQFX. First mid insurance. Clay, Lincoln University. Brittany Elder, Candlewood Suites Hotel. Aaron Court, Education and Employment Specialist at um, Anybody else want to introduce himself? Maybe, maybe, maybe if you think that it was, uh, we couldn't hear you because you were, we had two. Okay, good, good, good. Well, welcome. Okay, we do have some new members that we just want to announce that have joined the chamber since we came together last. Um, you can see with Edward Jones, Kristen Jones, uh, Chris on Mexican Restaurant, uh, Ginger's Roofing, uh, Nicole Manor, which is Nicole. Here today, um, Palm Strategic Group, uh, Schwartz Roofing, and Tiny Fins Survival Swim. So that's neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That was that was, We got that ribbon cutting there. All right. Well, welcome these members and all the other members. Glad to have you join us. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over uh, for Liberty Family Medicine. So glad that you guys are the sponsor, Beth and Jason combination. 
So I'm going to give the credit to you. Good morning. Yeah, Jason Grunder, Liberty Family Medicine. Super happy for the opportunity to be here this morning. We're going to use our time here to introduce you to the new health care plan briefly that we've been working on for almost the better part of three years. I hope it's unlike anything you've ever seen. It was purposely built to solve a lot of problems. It'll work for an individual, a business group of any size. Uh, we're going to step through two slides. One slide talks about the structure, and then the second slide has some pricing on it. On the first slide, we're going to describe the foundational piece of this healthcare plan. In the business scenario, it's considered an employee assistance program. When a business puts this plan in place, they're going to give this bottom green pilot box of benefits to all of their eligible employees. First thing out of the gate is our medical clinic. We have a physical location here in Jeff City over off uh, near Edgewood 179. Our clinic provides same and next day access uh, for urgent concerns, no procedural fees. We operate off a membership basis, basically. We don't bill insurance. We're incentivized to actually do a good job. It's not a numbers game in our clinic. Uh, again, no procedural fees. We try to refer out as little as possible. Dispensing medications, all of these things are in place to try to save you money and create a better healthcare experience. So right out of the gate with this plan, we're going to put that in place for the employees. Okay. Everything else I talk about in this bottom box is a reimbursable benefit that every employee, and if you enroll a dependent, every life that you put on this plan is going to get this box of benefits, basically. If you venture outside of our clinic for wellness visits up to three times a year, this plan will reimburse the cost of that wellness visit fee. Uh, preventative testing benefit, colonoscopies, mammograms, bone density studies, there's a list of blood work, a lot of facts that reimbursed for that benefit. Mental health counseling. Any counseling service. There's no network here. It's a reimbursement scenario. So if you're seeking one of these services currently, you keep going where you're at. You just now have the opportunity to turn it in and get reimbursed. But basically $3,000 per person annually to go talk to somebody. There's a prescription plan. We dispense medications, but controlled substances, things like that, we don't. So now we've built in a prescription plan here that everybody can get to CVS or Walgreens and get those other medications that we may not be able to provide. There's a physical health benefit, things like gym memberships, hot yoga, uh, online cycling classes. A child on this plan might use that benefit for their karate lessons, maybe dance, uh, traveling club sport team, something like that. Dental cleanings, it's all about wellness in this box, so it's for cleanings, x-rays, and fluoride treatments. It's not necessarily for crowns or fillings, but the point is you'll get your teeth cleaned, turn in the receipt, get paid. Vision screening, same thing, you'll get your eyes checked. Weight loss and nutrition, very first visit in our clinic, we've got her all can we come out. You want to start a weight loss goal, she can help you with that. With this benefit here, you got 500 bucks to go hire a registered dietitian and work with them to come up with meal plans. And the last thing in this box is going to be nicotine cessation. That is for patches and products, if you have to make it or not. So we start off with this foundational piece of usable wellness benefits. After that, for the hospital side, this is the most recent addition to this program. We've been developing a member owned healthcare cooperative for the major medical side of things. It is the perfect fit for about 95% of the people out there. Occasionally, we'll find somebody with a really expensive pre existing problem that it may not work for, but generally speaking, it works. There are no network restrictions. You're technically a cash pay patient. You get to shop. Where do you want to go? If you need a surgery and you want to go to one facility or the other, there's no card in your pocket telling you where you have to go anymore. Where do you want to go is the question. Kind of You're going to see the cost savings on the next screen and see the black price in just a minute. Uh, we operate up there. Per claim deductible instead of a calendar year. Some people play these games at the end of the year. They need to get a procedure done because they've met their deductible. It's going to reset in January on. That doesn't matter anymore with our structure. The only question you ask is have I already had a claim in the last 12 months? A family pays up to two claims per 12 month period of time. There's no more of this January 1 being an issue at all. Um, these two plans and programs are administered by the exact same team, so from an administrative standpoint, it's extremely seamless. There are some limitations on the pre-existing side that I can always talk to somebody about. Nicotine use over the age of 50 is also a limiting uh, limitation, and really expensive special events. So there are some things sometimes that will basically make this plan not necessarily appropriate for somebody, but we thought through that. We bundle those things together, uh, and basically on the next screen you're going to see this slide is missing one piece. In a business arrangement, we can actually put an insurance plan in place for one person within a group. That, that's new legislation from 2019. That is the piece of the puzzle that allows this program and this structure to work for any business group of any size. I mean, thousands of employees, it doesn't matter. It makes the government happy and satisfies, satisfies their requirements. That's the one piece missing on this slide, but it is an option on, on this plan, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is on this plan, sorry. So this is it, I mean, quick far enough. But anyway, basically it's called the Individual Coverage Health Reimbursement Arrangement. Individual Coverage. 
So there is no group health insurance on this screen. We can get a business out of group health insurance and the volatility. This is stable, has about a 2.5% annual increase rate. There is zero threat of a 10, 20, or 30% increase ever again. We've onboarded groups now for literally a group of 50, saving $210,000 over what Anthem wanted in their renewal. We just onboarded a group down here in Jeff City with 45 employees earlier this week. We'd love to talk to anybody about this plan structure. We can put this in place for business groups and then also an individual person. So on the individual side, should you enroll your family on your expensive plan through the employed spouse? Maybe not. You shouldn't spend such time plus a month for an individual spouse to be on that plan. Right? So anyway, individuals should look into this too. If you want to retire early, uh, if you want to, and you try to span the gap between Medicare, maybe you want to quit your corporate job and go in on a full-time side hustle. I don't think health benefits should not be <coughs> responsible for making helping you make a life altering decision. This is, I think, the thing that most people will see. And I'll just concentrate on health. So we have three different deductible levels you're seeing there. We've got age categories. Just concentrating maybe 30 to 50 years old. For everything I've read at all, you're looking at options somewhere between under 300 bucks, families under $1,000. That's really the big key takeaway. I don't expect people to leave this room and understand and be able to regurgitate anything I said, but I hope you leave the room knowing that there's something else out there that nobody's ever taken the time to build. It solves a lot of the problems that people face with healthcare. We have an actually uh, uh, a proactive plan. Our plan reaches out to a new patient, tries to get them to come into our plan. There's no visit fee. That's a burden on our system, but we want you to come in. We want you to meet Dr. Hall and we're the care provider that's and learn what we do. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, my contact information, I believe I've got business cards out there. The card at your table, I think is Beth's number on the back side of that little uh, bye bye free card, whatever it is. So I'm gonna sit down and talk. As an individual or for a business group, we're close to the time of renewals coming out, so we're free to reach out. Thank you very much. Yep, so we've got some goodies. You, whoever wins this, is the first recipient of our new Turvis Tumblr, in addition to uh, the gift card to Big Whiskey. So go to lunch on us, and the winner is Lynn Smith. opportunity to share about your business and then you get to work with Cumulus also on some uh, ads for, for your business so we appreciate Cumulus for being our sponsor. I'm going to go through our announcements quickly and Gary you've got the first one up why don't you let me know what we've got there. Okay this is a big weekend at Lincoln University they're starting off their season the first home game tonight or excuse me Saturday night at 7 o'clock against McKendree University and you have a flyer in front of you but just wanted to remind everybody this will be a lot of fun. It's a free event, free parking, uh, free tailgate, uh, thanks to the folks at the Blue Tiger Athletic Club. Uh, Legends Bank has stepped up to be our presenting sponsor and some of the other organizations involved, including the Eastside Community Veteran Association, the uh, Minority Business Council, and the Chamber. It talks about an RSVP on the flyer. Uh, you don't actually have to RSVP. If you just show up and park in the link parking lot on the west side of the stadium, tell them you're with the Chamber of Commerce, you'll get your parking free, and they'll also let you in that west gate free of charge as well. The Blue, if you're not involved with Blue Tigers, then you don't know how much fun that group has at football games. So I hope you can come out and experience that. <clears throat> don't worry about the RSVP. If it works out for you, come bring, bring your spouse or a significant other. Uh, or your kids, and uh, we'll have a good time on Saturday night at Lincoln University. Thank you. Gary, you love our hot dogs, hamburgers, and colds. What was that name? Hot dogs, hamburgers, and colds. Colds. Great time to 
network. We also have once a month a chance for you to network um, and kind of uh, do our social setting, like a happy hour type setting. So we have a different uh, restaurant or business that hosts our Chamber Connections each month. And last flight is the sponsor. It's the third Thursday, September 19th, this time, 4 to 5 30. Bring your business card. Uh, JT Parks is our, our co sponsor with that. So they will be there um, and we'll have great prizes. And it's just a great chance for you to not been with last flight to experience last flight. So September 19th. Um, another event, Joan, you want to talk about this? Um, so in two weeks on September 26th, we are going to have our Midmo Summit. Um, so tickets are still available. They are $55 a piece, or you can get an office pack of four for $200. Uh, we have a great lineup of speakers, and we're really looking forward to a great day of professional development. Thank you, Joan. All right, uh, speaking of events and speakers, we're announcing uh, this event, the Business Summit, has uh, changed a little bit. We've added on it's on the Business Leadership Summit. Um, it's a great opportunity for our uh, awards and to recognize business. But Gabe, you want to kind of explain the new component that we have to our business? I do. When, when I started my year this year, you know, we wanted to be more inclusive and really add some different things to the chamber. How can we benefit members, right? And so we started out with our women's symposium, and Jackie and I, and there's other women that we worked so closely, and it was it was a great event. But what we want to do is have a women's network. And this will be something going forward each year that there will be events for women, for growth, for development, for thinking about mental health and how you take care of yourself. And so really adding some meat to what we can do for women. And so we decided to kick it off on November 7th. And so you see Rebecca Welsh is our uh, keynote speaker. She is amazing. She does so many amazing things with Halo. And she's got a great story, and she's going to be the, the keynote that will talk about that. And so that will be a great day. I hope everybody can come because you can join our women's network at a good reduction that day. It's going to be 50 bucks is what it's going to cost for a woman to join, or a man, I guess, you know, uh, to join the women's network. But that day, you can join for only $25 and be part of the inaugural group going forward. So. We're going to talk more about it that day, but I hope everybody will consider this and, and be there uh, to join. We've got two amazing co-chairs that have stepped up. You saw the paper, Renee Dingle and Kiara Johnson have stepped up to be the co-chairs. So I know they've got a lot of amazing things, you know, scheduled for us and uh, opportunities that we can you know, get together and network and grow and learn together. So yeah, we got to become stronger together, right? That's exciting. So. That's exciting. So also at that day, as a reminder, we have we presented the Small Business Exceptional Employee Award, and we announced the winner of the pitch to win it. So we are taking nominations for those, and I know that we've sent you emails and we've communicated that. So think of someone that is deserving for either the business or that employee award, and we'll recognize them that day. Um, and then also, we've got a great committee working on this. This is a, a just to give you an idea of how it's going to be set up. Your business could have a table, um, a display table there, and participate. You can attend. You can, you know, share uh, more about your business. So um, on September 19th, we're going to open up that registration if you want to have a table and get your table. So I just want to kind of put that plug in. A lot of great stuff going on there. And I mentioned the pitch it. Ashley, do you want to speak about that? It's kind of rolled over the pitch it to win it. Um, sure, yeah. So the registrations are open, uh, registrations open until September 18th. Uh, Lauren Carter and myself will be doing free screening interviews all next week. So if you know someone that has a business idea or that recently just started their business, tell them to go on our website and register for the pitch it winning competition. And they might win yeah. $5,000. Yes. They have a chance to win $5,000. Oh, sure. Okay. So it's, it's, it's an awesome competition. Yeah, and it, it, it's really exciting to have that, you know, yes. with the Business and Leadership Summit. It's just going to be a great, great day, November 7th. Yep. So, yeah. All right, and we want to hear from the, the city too, Mayor. Do you want to give us a little update on what's going on with the city? Absolutely. First, thanks for inviting us. Yes. There's a lot going on in the city. I'll try to keep it brief and just catch you up. If you were at this event last month, Luke Holtzmeter was here. And, talk a little bit about our conference center project, which is still on track. We're hoping maybe in four to six weeks we'll have some exciting announcements to give a little bit of a heads up of what the project could look like and a financing package. We've been working very aggressively with Garfield Public Private, a company that we hired out of the Dallas area to kind of walk us through this process and move us through. So 
It's been very exciting. You've probably seen the news again. The building which the city purchased has come down, so we're beginning to get that site ready for the, the conference center project. And very excited about the announcement and what they brought to the table. And Luke and his team at, at JC Regional Economic Partnership have done exactly what we were hoping that they have guided this process through and I think have brought us a good opportunity to do the types of things that we don't do in the city every day. I mean, we needed professionals on all ends of this project. So we're very excited. Moving east on, on Capitol Avenue, the 400 block, hopefully you saw the, the announcement last night. We are beginning the implementation process of the RFP. As most in the city know, we inherited a number of properties from Ms. Fisher, and we have been working aggressively over the last few years to try to maintain and save as many of those. And I heard a number yesterday, I, I was surprised that we have been able to maintain 60% of the properties that we inherited, and we inherited some properties that were very distressed. So it's exciting the ones that we've been able to maintain. There will be two proposals going to council on Monday night to begin the process, kind of the anchor project. One at 401, which is a proposed rebuild. One at the other end at 429, the old Fisher Funeral Home. We've had an exciting proposal to basically rehab that building. Capitol Avenue side will, will look much the way it did in the heyday of that funeral home. They'll have to take part of the back of the building out just because of damage in that building that they're proposing. Meeting space, office space, it's actually an organization that lost their building on the other side of the Capitol back during the tornado. And they have been anxiously awaiting an opportunity on Capitol Avenue to get back into the capital city. So we're very excited about those two anchor projects. And then we've got 20 properties that we inherited through that process. Two other homes that I think council will be moving on. And then there's just some vacant properties because of demolitions that we have put RFPs out and we'll begin the process of how we do the end bill once we get those two anchors. So I think the community, I hope they're excited about the proposals that are moving forward. I, I said in, the, in my comments that we're trying to preserve history where we can. We're trying to create history for the next generation where we can't preserve the yeah, I think we've got some exciting things and we've got some great partners that, that are working with us. Continuing a few more blocks up, up Capitol Avenue to the prison site and I'm just going to ask under what's going on in the historic area in the tours, but the property that the city was conveyed from the state, we continue to look at the river market which would be kind of on the back side of Chestnut Street just off of Capitol Avenue, we've been working with the state of Missouri Office of Administration, DNR, other to see what's going to happen with the wall. I think we finally got approval to remove some of that wall along Chestnut and then some on the back side of the property to begin to fit that river market. We're working very diligently with the state of Missouri just across Chestnut, so just on the east side of Chestnut, they have begun to work on the one health lab or the health lab, I think they've changed the name of it. But it will be a, a lab that will pull six or seven state agencies together. That's about a $175 million project. So we're working with them on a rebuild of Chestnut Street. And then obviously that would be one of the gateways to the river market. We've also got some potential ideas on the front side of that property. I don't know that they're ready for public consumption yet, but on that capital and Chestnut, and we've had some folks approach us about that site. So a lot of exciting things happen on Capitol Avenue, as I said in, in my comments. Those eight blocks are very critical to the city. And we understand that. We understand the historic significance of those blocks. Again, the people that have committed and many rebuilt after the, the tornado, some could not and they're wanting to come back to join us. So I think it's very exciting. A lot going on at Public Works, a lot going on at, at Council. Public Works is in the process of sending out the bid, the extension of Wildwood. We talked about that project for a couple of years, and also the rehab of Monroe Street, which is 
a very important a very important access point for our city. So where the wall collapsed several years ago, I think it goes out to bid, and we're anticipating first part of 2025 finally getting shovels in the ground. And they were so excited, and I almost feel thunder from Lincoln, but the nursing school at Lincoln, there's a lot of activity in our community. We've been working very hard over the last 15 months to open this community up, and we feel very excited about things that are going on, and you know, that helps our, our realtors. They're looking and working with us. This is a very exciting community. We were named at in the top list, I forgot what the recognition was, but we've gotten some housing recognition over the last year or so, and we are very diligently working on the housing issue. We've got groups working on that. We've got two low-income housing tax credit projects that will be going to the state in December. We were excited to get approval on one last December, and they're about ready for shoveling ground on the west side of the city. There's a proposal in the middle of the city, which would be a, a senior type housing project, and there's also a proposal on the east side. So if we can get those two, that gives us about 150 new units that will go in, in addition to other things that, that are being proposed. So I appreciate the staff. We've got our city administrator, Ms. Bryant, who's our communications or public information officer, Mr. Smith, who is very integral in these things. You know, I think and we've got one of our council members here who has helped us drive the process, especially on housing, and I you know, appreciate the work work that he does and keeps it out there. And I know this organization, you know, Gay is very focused on housing. So I think we've got similar messages and you know, we're just trying to move this community forward. Our big businesses, our small businesses, and everybody is stepping up to be Part of this chamber is very actively involved in keeping our community engaged and reference points. So we appreciate the, the partnerships and future so bright in many shapes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, neon nights, Caleb, right there. Yeah. Good, good. Thank you for that, Gary. I think I'm going to turn it over to you now to make the introduction. All right. Mayor, good to hear that report today. There are lots of excitement going on in the community, so thank you for your presentation. You know, uh, I got here three years ago to accept this job at the Chamber, and immediately, after my uh, introductory meetings with a lot of uh, Chamber members, discovered that workforce is the number one issue in everybody's mind. And uh, for that reason, a couple of years ago, we approached J.C. Brett about a joint venture, which we call the Workforce Coalition. And that's a group of about 40 public and private sector employers and educators uh, who come together every other month and they have developed an action strategy uh, about four different teams working on different aspects like childcare and housing and so forth. One of the teams we put together was on talent attraction. And uh, Amy Sublet, uh, who is also one of our who chairs for the uh, Workforce Coalition, chairs that effort. Amy's with the uh, Central Region Workforce Development Board. Does a great job, she's been very involved in this. But we put together a team uh, with representatives from JC Rep, the Convention of Business Bureau, Diane, and Alex is on her team, both have been involved in that, the Jefferson City Board of Realtors, school district, and city and the county have all been part of a talent attraction effort last year. Uh, the effort culminated in a launch in April of 2024 uh, where we uh, revealed a new website uh, that you have seen this uh, website information before. We're going to talk a little bit more about that today. That was just launched in April. Today is actually kind of an exciting day because for a couple of reasons we're really entering into the second phase of our uh, JCMO Cali campaign. And we're going to talk about a big part of that in the second phase here in just a minute. But I would mention that also this weekend at the air show, uh, the JCMO team is putting together a career fair and a job fair at the uh, at Show Me State Air Show. And we'll be doing that on Saturday and Sunday. 
And one of the things that we're going to encourage you all to participate in, we'll be asking hopefully 20,000 people who were at that event this weekend to take this survey, and we would encourage you all to consider doing that as well. You can go to the homepage of our website, and uh, our speaker this morning will tell you a little bit more about how to do that. Uh, when we decided to launch this campaign, we did a RFP process and ended up with about four local marketing uh, groups who sent forward. Uh, ironically, all of them were partnering with Cosmic Sauce, uh, Johnny Eaker and his team, who are chamber members. Uh, but we uh, quickly came to a consensus that ImageMark uh, put together the best, most comprehensive proposal. We've been working with Aaron DeBurr and his team at ImageMark uh, for the past year on this on this effort. We invited Aaron to be here today to tell you a little bit more about Base 2. Uh, we're getting ready to excite uh, even more aggressive effort to try to get the word out about what a great place this is. And I'm going to turn it over to Aaron to talk, talk to you all about what's coming next. Aaron? Okay. Thank you, Gary. So, yeah, I'm Aaron here from ImageMark Marketing and Advertising. We're a local marketing agency here in Jefferson City. And uh, happy to be here, happy to be part of this, this campaign. Um, the growth of Jefferson City uh, is always going to help everybody here in the room. It's going to help us as well. So happy to be part of it. Uh, I have a quick kind of presentation, I think about seven, eight slides, kind of go over uh, how the program started, the first phase of the program, and then kind of where we are now as we're getting ready to launch our first marketing campaign. So, and then, um, I forgot to tell you, but the, <laughs> I'd like to go to the, the website at the end and, and show the uh, video okay. that's there. So, hopefully, it's real. Okay. So, all right. So, the, as Gary pointed out, the, the RFP, I, I think, came out about November, December timeframe of 2022. Uh, and this is the, the problem statement, objective, and strategy that was identified on the RFP. So the problem statement simply states, states that Jefferson City is not able to retain or attract enough talent, talent in its workforce to allow businesses here to sustain or even to grow. So, I, again, back to the, the problem statement and back to what Gary said is, is we, need, uh, we need to attract more people to, to come to Jefferson City to live and we also need to retain people that are looking to leave this community to, to seek employment somewhere else. And that's, and that's exactly what the objective says. Strategy, uh, the strategy of the whole marketing campaign is just to have that, that unified message. We have, we have great, uh, great stories to tell of why people should live here. And that's what we're gonna cover a little bit of that here in this presentation. But we need to have that, that message that we continually promote so that people understand that there's, there's great things to do that's going on here in Jefferson City and you should consider moving here if you're looking to relocate somewhere else. Um, so as Gary pointed out, phase one of the program really started about mid-2023. And if you think about this uh, kind of like a brand new company, it pretty much started from the beginning. So we didn't have a name, we didn't have colors, we didn't have a logo, we didn't have any of that, that information. So we worked together as a team come up with the, the name, come up with the logos, come up with the colors, then we work right into the website, which we'll show at the end. Um, and then, as Gary pointed out, we worked with Cosmic Sauce, who produced uh, a couple of great videos, one with the mayor and, and commissioner, and then, and then the video that I'll show at the end is the, the place to live and grow and make your home. It's the kind of the overall video showcasing everything that Jefferson City has to offer. I mean, it's two and a half minute video, so it doesn't have everything in there, but uh, I think it's a great video that, that promotes Jefferson City. Photography, again, we, uh, we went on, I think it was four full days of photo shoots, getting different, different assets that we can use and different marketing pieces as we continue to promote uh, Jefferson City. Uh, we created six blog posts that are on the website that, again, cover uh, the different marketing mediums, the uh, cost of living, the stuff that we're going to talk about on this next slide. slide they're, they live on the website. They also, uh, to provide more information, people can read and digest and, and make their decisions. Plus, uh, as it lives on the website, it helps with the search and optimization of the website. Uh, infographics are used for social media. Uh, we created social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, and YouTube. And then we also created 10 social media posts, uh, 
uh, to kind of get the campaign launched, get it off the ground. Uh, so we launched those, and then after the April event, we pretty much handed over the social media account to the chamber, who's managing now continuing to post uh, to promote Jackson State. And then, as Gary pointed out, April 3rd, I believe, was the event, uh, the launch event. So we, pressed, we created press releases for that. We created a new Tribune ad, uh, again, to promote the event, get people to the website to make the, the campaign. Messaging objectives. Um, again, these, so if you're looking to move to a new place where um, you might be thinking of, what schools that you need to put your your kids in. So there's there's pages on the website that has talks about the local schools. And if I back up for just a second, the the website itself is is designed to try to be the central point where if somebody's looking to move or relocate to Jackson City, we want them to funnel into the website and we're trying to provide all the resources that they need to get some information and then we link off to other websites where appropriate to, to get additional information. So the website is kind of the central point we try to direct all the traffic to. Uh, we'll have some lead forms on there as well to, if somebody wants more information about Jefferson City, they can fill out a form, it goes to the chamber, they can, they can route it to the right group, whether that's uh, it's, uh, it's housing or whether it's uh, recreational things, they can direct it to the right folks. So on the website, like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna see uh, there's a page on schools, page talking about safety. We, have, we live in a great community, nice safe community. Uh, we're promoting that on the website. Cost of living, uh, it's a great opportunity to, living here in mid-Missouri, it's, it's, the cost of living is a lot lower than say the East Coast or West Coast of the United States. So another one of our marketing uh, pieces that we've done, we continually want to promote. Medical services, we have great medical providers throughout town. <coughs> So we have a page on that. <coughs> Recreational, um, we have a page dedicated to just uh, the parks and recs. Um, and then outside of that, we, we link to the, the Visitors Bureau where they have a great site with a lot of different activities. <coughs> like gain, uh, a better calendar, I guess, of, of different events. So we have a link that goes right to their site to again share more information. And then last but certainly not least, if you're looking to move, the number one thing that you're looking for is a job. You gotta have a job, obviously, if, if you're looking to relocate your family. So there's a jobs page on there, and then we link to the Chambers job board where all the local communities can post their jobs uh, there on, on the Chambers job board. So that kind of wraps up phase one of the program, or the, the campaign that really started, that kind of ended about April, May timeframe on the launch of the website. Now as we look into the future, <laughs> To affect change and affect population is not going to be an overnight. We can't turn on a single marketing campaign and thousands and 10,000 people a month are going to be able to move into a completed area. So we need to look at our, our strategy, a long term strategy to identify how we're going to continually get this message in front of people uh, that are looking to move. And first, we look at the target market. So when we look at data, uh, the, the folks that are most likely to move are those that are 25 to 45 years of age. So they're past high school, uh, they might have a college degree, they might have a tech degree, they're in the workforce, they're building a family, they're looking for those opportunities. So those are the folks, even at the lower range that we're looking for. The upper range are folks that probably, they, they've been in the, the workforce for a while. They, are, they have a family, they're looking for those next opportunities to continue to grow their income income, uh, continuing for the, looking for those next professional opportunities. So that's that's our age range, 25 to 45 years of age. And obviously we're looking for jobs. There's people have to be looking for a job. I mean, if you're not looking for a job, then you're less likely to be, to be looking to be located. So I understand that, so that's part of our, our target market. And then the target area, if there's, if budget wasn't a factor, we could target all throughout the United States. We can target all throughout the, United, the world to try to bring people here. But operating within the budgets and everything, we need to start looking at Missouri and then start looking at the surrounding states where we see the most opportunity for, for people to relocate to, to Jackson State. And then at the marketing mediums, um, if you know anything about marketing, there, there's tons of marketing opportunities out there. So on your traditional side of the house, we have TV, radio, print, uh, billboards, number of different opportunities there to reach folks. 
but we really feel the best way to market this kind of campaign is to really use the digital marketing mediums that you see here. So your LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, that's that's going to be the most bang for a buck, and it's also going to be able to have the, the best report. As we run ads, they're going to have the ability to measure the, the ad success and pivot where needed to to make the, the most effective use of the, of the budget. So LinkedIn, I'm sure you guys are all aware of it. It's it's a great platform for for job job seekers. It's a great networking opportunity for folks in the, in the employment space. Facebook, Instagram, that's the, actually, in the next slide you'll see, that's the what we're going to be using in our first marketing campaign. It's, Facebook continues to be the number one social media platform in the United States. 77% of the United States population is using, has a Facebook account. And that number might be low. You can find some reports of like 80, 85% of folks that have a Facebook account. Facebook's owned by Meta. Um, Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram. So we have the luxury of using Facebook. When we post, we place our ads on Facebook, we also place them on Instagram. So Facebook is, it means a little older demographic than Instagram, but again, using uh, their platform to reach both of those age demographics. Uh, YouTube, again, another great marketing medium, especially for any video content that we have. So we'll be looking to use that whenever possible. Um, for, for, for video content and remote purposes. And as Gary pointed out, um, it's kind of exciting news is we're, we're starting uh, here on October 1st, we're, gonna, we're about to start a six month uh, marketing campaign. So this is the first time we're really reaching outward, outside of the local network uh, to promote Jefferson City. So we're building, right now we're building the marketing, the, the, the campaigns, uh, and again, we're targeting uh, 25 to 45 years of uh, people that are 25 to 45 years of age. Um, and then my note here about special ad categories. In Facebook itself, they have what we call special ad categories uh, for housing income, uh, sorry, housing credit and um, employment ads. So when we're running categories, if, if, if Facebook flags those as being in that special ad category, it will restrict how we use the, the the, de the de demographic information. So I'm targeting folks 25 to 45 years of age, which is fine. We will pivot where needed. Um, we'll design the ads and we'll work with Facebook within their requirements to, to make sure we're reaching the right people. And if we can't reach them, if it's an employment ad, we'll just we'll use general audience advertising. So basically we'll cast a wider net and we'll cast a wider net of folks and we'll continue to work them down there there are areas of consideration to put more and more ads in front of them, promoting Jackson City as we work their levels of consideration. Um, job seekers, again, we understand that this is an employment. You gotta have opportunities for people if they're there to kind of move. And then geography, uh, our first campaign is really gonna be designed, we're gonna be looking at the two biggest metros in, in Missouri, so Kansas City and, and, and St. Louis County. And the reason for that, again, is, is they're local, they're close enough, they, understand, they know Jefferson City, we believe we're gonna have the best success, we have the biggest markets to drive people that are interested in, in leaving the big cities and coming to, uh, to Jefferson City. The last couple slides I have here, um, how you can help us, and if I can actually, how do we do that? So the, the QR code that I have on the screen, and it's on the back of your guys' cards, will direct you to the home page of the, of the website. And as Gary pointed out, right at the top is that take your take the survey. That's the survey that that uh, we love participation in. Um, and then if you scroll down at the bottom, so in the footer of each page of the website, you'll see all the social media accounts. Uh, so if you click on any of those icons, it'll direct you right to the social media accounts. Please click on them, follow, share, where appropriate. Um, and, and the last thing I'd like to show everybody is if we go up a little bit, there's the two videos that I was referencing. So if we can click on this video right here, we'll show this about three. Life has this way of leading us to unexpected places, the places that deeply resonate within us. Jefferson City, 
is that kind of place where talented individuals capable of thriving anywhere choose to call home. Living, growing, and making a home in Jefferson City means having the best of both worlds. It's a city that preserves traditions and aspires for a better tomorrow. Here, opportunities are vast, industries flourish, and careers thrive, from manufacturing to higher education, financial services to healthcare. The list of industries continues to grow. There's no shortage of opportunity in Jefferson City. Whether you're launching your career or seeking advancement, Jefferson City offers a network of connections to nurture your personal and professional ambitions. Located in the heart of the Midwest, Jefferson City has access to multiple transportation options. Situated on major highways with access to local and regional airports, you can get anywhere from here. Those who choose Jefferson City truly enjoy a low cost of living. It's a place where you can aim higher without sacrificing financial stability. A community safeguarded with integrity, enhancing the quality of life with dedication, compassion, and pride. Families who live here are preparing for a better future. There's no shortage of educational opportunities for students to learn and grow. Whether it's an afternoon exploring the area's rich history, a concert at the amphitheater, or enjoying a variety of family entertainment options, Jefferson City has activities for all ages. Outdoor adventures unfold at every turn here, where the landscape invites you to explore its beauty. Its location is not just a dot on the map, it's a doorway to an adventure-filled life of activities. If you're a person who desires that small town feel with large city opportunities, this is the place for you. Because where you make your living, where you make your home, and where you make your life matters. Make it here in Jefferson City. Want to explore your future? Visit jcmolivegrowhome.com to learn more. Thank you, that's, that's the video that Cosmic Stocks put together. I thought it was great. Thanks, Kit, for being a part of that. Um, appreciate that. Any questions? I don't have any questions. I just wanna say thank you um, for what you're doing. I think this is so important for our community, for our chamber. Zamir summed up everything so well, all that we're doing, working together, right? And you know, kind of that best kept secret, right? If we don't promote and attract those who come in, show them how great we are, we're not gonna get anywhere. We're gonna stay right where we are. So I think it's so important. You guys are doing a great job. So I wanna say thank you. Again, I wanna say thank you to everybody else that stepped up to do some different things. One thing, I don't know if you're gonna talk about it, we've got a membership drive coming up as well. So I hope if you're asked to participate, I know some of this room have already said yes, yeah, so thank you to them. But the membership drive also is so important to our chamber, continuing to reach out to those that are not members and ask them to be members and show them all the great things that we're doing as well and working to, and continue to work together. So this is, I think, is, is an amazing opportunity that we have to reach out now and attract those to come here and work. And I think you said it great. Live, grow, and make Jefferson City their home. So. Thank you, Gay. Thank you, Aaron. Hope you all will uh, get a chance to take that survey and look at the website if you haven't already. I'll turn it back over to Susan. Yeah, what a, a, a PowerPoint. I think that was pretty much that. Thank you, Aaron. That was great. I think that was awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you pretty much. Gary, do you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I think anything? we covered it. Okay. All right, any member announcements? We have a few minutes. We'd love to hear from you. If you have something you want to share about your business or maybe the organization you're involved in. Susan, I just want to give a testimonial to the leadership class. Um, if you have ever considered participating in the leadership class, um, I don't know when the application process starts for 2025, but from March until the Battle of the Bruce competition, it was a great opportunity for me who lived in Columbia, but is working on actually moving to Jefferson City to get more involved in the community. So if it's something that you're considering doing, I would definitely talk to, to Ashley or Susan about it. It's a, it's a great way to be connected. Well, the applications will go live in December, beginning of December. Good. Oh, good. Uh, again, my name is Diane Houston. Uh, with mentioned I'm with Lincoln Women's Basketball, so uh, I just got invited here just trying to 
trying to put a face to uh, everybody in the community uh, that I'm the new head coach there. So uh, excited to be here for that. And then um, if any one of you want to know more about our women's basketball program, get involved in any kind of way, uh, my, all of my contact information is public on, on our athletics website. So you can find me there. So feel free to reach out. Um, also, just want to mention that we have a, an event for ourselves that's more of like a, a meet and greet uh, with our women's basketball program, Big Whiskeys. Uh, it's going to host us there on October 9th. Uh, I believe at 5 o'clock that would start, where you can just come out, bring family, friends, you know, have food, have drinks, things like that. But we'll be there. We'll be giving apparel away uh, for women's basketball. We'll have schedules, posters. Some of our players will be there to sign some of those uh, posters as well. Uh, so it's just, a, it's just an event for us to be out in the community, meet everybody, uh, put our faces out there. And then the hope for that is to get you in the seats uh, to come and watch us play. So. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other announcement? Yeah. Go, Steph. Next Saturday, September 21st, is the Redemption Inside the Walls concert at the JC's Fairgrounds. So I invite everyone to come. Uh, it's a uh, more of a Christian type of concert um, and evening. It begins, gates open at 5 p.m. And Matt Mayer is a uh, featured artist this year. So, and he, he goes on stage at 7. You can get tickets at redemptioninsightwalls.com and they're only ten dollars this year. So you see you there. I'll say fun. The amphitheater has six concerts in four weeks, uh, starting September 28th. So make um, sure you go to JC Park website, go to the amphitheater website, get tickets at the popcorn big box office at Riverside Park for the boy that you get down to peace. Uh, there's a lot of our really good concerts we have. Unless anybody online have an announcement? Not? All right. Well, good, good. Good to hear from you. I think the line turned off. I guess we'll, yeah, that's okay. Really, all I was going to say is we're going to see you next month. There you go. See you month, October 11th. So it's great. Glad to be here. Yes, Gary. We're going to have the president of State Fair Community College, Brent Bates, will be with us. They're doing some exciting partnerships with Lincoln. And they are our community college, so I hope you'll come meet Dr. Bates and find out more about what they're up to. Good. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. All right. Thank you. Good job.